This evening, uh, we're going to be speaking about municipal service center relocation. Uh, it's associated with the Duke Life Point Hospital uh, construction uh, relocation project. Uh, that being said, we're going to try to focus exclusively on just the service center relocation part. So we know you probably have a lot of questions about relocating the hospital. You might have some questions about uh, federal or state roadway, how we're going to reconstruct some of the local transportation infrastructure, things like that. And we'll be glad to take those questions, but we're not really prepared to have that dialogue this evening. Uh, tonight, we're really here to provide kind of an update and, and a description of what we've been doing to focus exclusively on the service center relocation component. And I typically give these updates during the colloquy uh, of regular city commission meetings. So if you're interested in kind of keeping track of this over time, in addition to reaching out to city staff or myself, maybe chatting with the commissioners, I try to give an update on this every two weeks. And uh, that being said, you'll hear a little bit about the acquisition process from Kurt. There might be some things that could be considered acquisition sensitive. So if we aren't able to answer all of the questions you might have this evening, uh, uh, thank you. Please understand we'll, we have some constraints right now, but we will eventually be able to do that. Uh, as far as the process goes, let me give you a little bit of an overview before I introduce the team. Uh, this, this project really has uh, started over the course of the last four months and uh, the way we looked at it was uh, this is kind of a golden opportunity if you will for the city to take advantage of the timing of the hospital's relocation it's it's serendipitous that they were looking at the service center site at exactly the point in time when the service center by its original plan had completed its first useful lifespan so the existing service center is designed, and we've put these documents out on the city website. If you're interested in them, you can go take a look at the background. It was designed to last for 30 years, and we are now coming into the 30th year of that structure at exactly the point in time when we're able, instead of looking at continuing putting more capital improvements into it, to actually replace the whole building and potentially posture, posture us to have a modern building for the next 30 years. And so in looking at that, looking at the gravity that past city commissions, past staff studied that project, uh, their process was pretty straightforward. They reached out to all the partner jurisdictions that are tenants within the city because there's an opportunity not just for the city to gain value out of this opportunity, but if there are other jurisdictions that have relocation or facility requirements that could be satisfied as part of this move, we wanted to make sure to extend that to all of our friends and partners. Uh, the other things that we did was we started out the process by casting the broadest possible net. And so you'll, you'll hear more about that. But what it meant was we didn't try to presuppose any filters at the beginning of the process, uh, whether, whether things were occupied in use, uh, being used for some other purpose. Uh, those kind of things weren't part of the initial discussion. In order to try to cast the broadest possible net, and encourage everybody to think as far out of the box as possible to see what kind of value we could generate for the community. We started with some pretty simple criteria and you're going to hear more about the process of how then additional filters, additional lenses were applied to that data and where we currently stand. Uh, the important thing to, under, to, to keep in mind is this is a, an ongoing process and what you're seeing tonight is very preliminary. So nothing here is going to be written in stone. Uh, this, what you're going to see is the current state of where we're at. We're actively seeking ideas from the community. Uh, we're actively seeking input from the community on the ideas that we've already had. So what you might see it, from your own perspective is there may or may not be sites on there that you would have thought about, that we may or may not have thought about, and vice versa. You might have other criteria that we should have contemplated that we may or may not have contemplated. Uh, our process going forward from here is to work through with our partners, our peers, and all of the input we receive from you, the remainder of the process, leading up to a city commission work session where we're going to be able to discuss this actively with the city commission. That will also be a public meeting. So if we haven't resolved your questions by then, you'll have an opportunity to participate once again in the deliberation with the, with the city commission prior to us putting it forward for any kind of a vote. So this is the first of really three public meetings that we're conducting to try to get the right answer for the, for the city and for the community. 
Now, uh, as far as this meeting goes, I'd like to recognize that we have commissioners in the audience. Uh, they are here not to directly participate, but to listen. Uh, they, they aren't here to do anything other than to help us capture the mood of the input. Uh, there might be other, some of our partners here, I'm going to leave that to Kurt to maybe discuss and identify them as, as uh, they believe would be appropriate. Uh, we'd encourage them to participate. Um, and uh, part of this I mentioned earlier was an acquisition process. Uh, Kurt's going to give you a little bit of an overview about where we stand with that as well. I've previously described that uh, for the City Commission for updates during City Commission meetings as really taking the basic analysis that we started with, looking at the criteria necessary to start capturing what kind of firms and what kind of vendors might be interested and available to do this kind of work. And he's going to give an update on where we stand with that process and what to expect moving forward. Our hope would be that at the end of tonight, we'll have been able to capture all of your input specifically about the service center. We'll capture all the input, but specifically about the service center so that we can use that to inform the next steps of our acquisition processes and our commission decision processes. So on that note, let me take no further role other than to introduce Kurt Goodman, our superintendent and DPW director, who's been leading the team. Uh, his staff, Scott Cambenzi, who's our uh, uh, superintendent, uh, uh, Eric Stamen, who's our superintendent, uh, both working for Kurt, and Jen LePage, who's our management analyst and the CMO, who's been throwing in because this is a, a pretty big project, and I think you'll, you'll uh, agree once you hear all the things that have been going on. With no further ado, let me turn it over to Kurt Goodman. A little story, uh, I went to college back in 78, and there's one class I... Uh, I took, and at this time, I wish I paid uh, closer attention uh, to public speaking. So uh, um, be patient with me. Uh, I don't do a lot of public speaking, but um, you know I'll, I'll do my best. Um, like Bill said, he gave a pretty good introduction, sort of a broad picture. Um, back when the announcement was made, um, when Duke Light Point chose the city of Marquette for its uh, new location. The process of the, uh, the, <coughs> the subject of the Municipal Service Center possibly being uh, having be re re relocated started. There was a lot of brainstorming, a lot of rumors, a lot of input. You know, we, we listened to all the public works employees, um, the staff here, and we, we took notice of that. And immediately we really started throwing out ideas. Um, conceptual um, possibilities, thinking outside the box, and also just doing a lot of, a lot of brainstorming. That information really, it wasn't really, you know, put out to the public because every time, you know, before we did that, we really got to do our homework before we share information, make sure we have some of the facts, you know, straight before uh, it goes uh, out, out publicly. This will be the first time uh, some of these that this information has been um, publicly uh, announced. So uh, um, that's something uh, we wanted to make sure that we are in a position, and the timing was right that we could uh, bring this, in, this, this forward. Uh, before I actually start the presentation, I'll give you a little update on the challenge we are, we're, we're, uh, we're against is replacing a um, municipal service center in a very short time period. That time period has not been established at this time. There's a lot of other moving parts within the uh, Duke Life Point um, uh, uh, property acquisition, and also they got they got to work on a lot a design of their hospital. However, we are taking uh, being pretty uh, progressive uh, moving forward because it's our goal is to not at all interrupt any services that um, we provide the, the, the residents of Marquette and also um, do it so we don't have to move twice. So that's the uh, sort of our approach uh, to do uh, to, to get this, this new service center built. In, um, as part of the process, we decided to go with it's called a design build um, process. 
basically we would hire a engineer architect slash um, general contractor to work as a team. Uh, RFQ was sent out in um, December or in November with a response for uh, December 19th. And RFQ is request for qualifications. So what we're doing, we're, we're looking for the best uh, uh, engineer slash contractor that work as a team to provide a very good product to the city in a uh, in a timely fashion and of course a cost efficient way. That process, um, we sh we had eight responses from uh, you know uh, uh, from from design build teams you know throughout the Midwest you know Michigan. All of them did have a uh, a local presence, so that was encouraging to see. And from there, we shortlisted those eight down to four. And the next step in this process is to request uh, for proposal. That is a full proposal. And a proposal is about 20 pages. And that gives these design build teams information to provide a, a very good conceptual idea of moving forward. There's going to be a lot of other uh, uh, we will bring a lot of this information to future commission meetings. So nothing's been, uh, you know, set in stone. Uh, those proposals are due uh, November 20, November, <laughs> um, January 27th. And then once we, you know, make a, we'll make a recommendation uh, to the city commission on February 9th of a selected uh, engineer uh, architect um, design build team. So that's sort of a key step in moving forward. So there's, um, there's a lot of, uh, that's, that's a big decision that will start to get us uh, on the ground running. Um, and then there'll be additional meetings with, as we go through the design of the facility. So just let everyone know that there's no decisions on the size of the facility. We got conceptual ideas right now. Um, those will all be work, worked on through the whole process. So let's say we got a 94,000 square foot building right now. It doesn't have to be a 94,000. So there's a lot of, we're asking our engineer architects to give us some proposals. And we do not have a, we'll have a budgetary cost uh, and, uh, and uh, as part of that proposal. And then we'll have that information. So again, that's a, uh, we had a excellent turnout today for a pre-proposal meeting. Over 28 uh, individuals from these firms uh, attended that. You know, so we're getting, they ask uh, good questions, so we'll be uh, working through that in the next couple weeks. Um, I'm going to go through the presentation, um, with, and then after I give the presentation, we're going to encourage, uh, you know, participants to come up and uh, make some comments, opinions, and speak on behalf of their, you know, whatever um, they wish to. And then after those comments are done, we're going to then a answer questions. So we're trying to, you know, keep it in a format that everyone has a chance to speak, and then we'll open it up for <coughs> questions. And once again, this is being recorded, and also Jen has taken notes, and um, the questions will be answered, you know, accordingly. Okay, uh, the current municipal center, service center, it uh, consists of a public works building, equipment lay down area, material storage, cold storage, salt storage, and snow storage. And those are the acres uh, appropriated to each of those uh, uh, functions. There's a total 16.5 acres. Okay, as I mentioned before, we all, we were, we've been brainstorming uh, ever since September, um, well actually August, September, and what we decided to do before we uh, go out and start looking for acre, you know, a possible new location, we wanted to uh, set a site evaluation criteria. And those categories included the size, location, site condition, accessibility, surrounding property use, traffic flow, land use, zoning, utilities, and current ownership and logistics. <laughs> so that was the criteria we used as we went through potential sites. OK. 
Okay. Right here are sites that met some of the criteria. We were looking for 12 acres. That was the minimum amount of acres we need to build a, we believe, a uh, service center that would meet the uh, uh, residents' needs. Some of these are pretty crazy. We thought outside the box. Um, you know, so just keep an open mind. Um, as you, uh, we have Marquette Board Light and Pop, uh, 550, Econo Foods, you know, it's one of those things that, hey, there's an area up there. Again, it's just one that was considered. Lakeview Arena, Marquette Mall, Medical Center, uh, McCoggan Avenue, Ridge Street, Marquette Senior High School, Norlight Nursing Home, uh, southeast portion of existing hospital, Tourist Park. You know, there's an area there, a lot of trees, that might be, um, you know, uh, a possibility. Uh, West Barriga Avenue site, um, BLP uh, Wright Street property, Clifstow site, that one's there, but that one's really not considered at all. Um, that's sort of designated for uh, uh, potential other use down the road. Bothwell Middle School. Oh. So those were the sites that we considered. These, these were eliminated or you know, we, we answered all the questions to the criteria, wrote down why, why not, and we really felt that to go further on with these really wasn't in the best interest of the, uh, of the city and the, uh, the residents. So what we did, then we came up with a site short list. These are ones that really said, you know what, these make some sense. They still need to be looked at closer, but these ones we felt a little bit confident and comfortable bringing forward to the community. Um, again, a lot of the criteria that was used was um, looked at for uh, these metal, the criteria uh, that we could uh, use moving forward. They include a Covent Avenue Division, Armory National Guard Building. That's one that the Armory is looking to uh, possibly uh, consolidate all the armories around the, uh, the, the UP into one central location. So that, that one will be, uh, that site will be, you'll see later on, will be uh, available, possible, possible, available, poss possible. North Ball Fields and then a Wright Street property adjacent to N NMU uh, Service Center or the heating plant. So these are the ones I'm going to sort of go in a little bit more detail about and uh, once again we call this the uh, site short list okay the first one McClellan Avenue um, that's a division street um, it's uh, the city owns it it's approximately 29 acres conditions completely wooded fairly hilly far south portion of the city access by uh, my minor uh, road and collector road Residential recreation surrounding utilities available. Another one to the uh, city and a lot of businesses they rely on uh, technology. The city of Marquette has a fiber optic loop that goes through around uh, the city, and everything, all the buildings are connected through this fiber. It is not on the fiber loop, so that would uh, require a, a, a additional cost if we uh, chose a site. This is the, the area here. It's the division of McLevin. I call it the triangle. This one, you know, it, it, uh, it's a possibility. You can see what we said that was a little bit hilly. Those are contour lines that, uh, so I'd be, uh, you need to, whatever design, incorporate within that. Uh, the, the contours and the the, um, the land characteristics. Second one, uh, Armory Building. Again, this one potentially this this facility uh, will become available. Uh, it's 6.1 acres. Um, it's off uh, Lincoln Street. Um, 
but it, it, it's one that we might be able to work. Uh, you'll see a couple other sites coming up that uh, involve a little bit of Northern's property. So if we can work together with Northern that some way acquire this facility, Northern might be able to um, take, you know, have use some of this property and then maybe do a, a land swap for uh, some of their uh, <coughs> property um, that you'll see on a couple other sites. But it is, uh, those are some of the uh, conditions there. It's surprising when we, we were looking at the acres that uh, it was <coughs> six acres. And if you drive out there, uh, it, it is, it's a pretty good, uh, you know, piece of property. <coughs> okay. Armory Field. Um, something I learned during this process, uh, <coughs> I forget who it was, but they said that this used to be the old, uh, um, this is across from the armory where the, uh, uh, the northern uh, intramural fields are, soccer fields are. This used to be the state fairground. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone remembers that, but um, that's something I learned. Uh, conditions, entirely flat, open area, um, north center of the city. There's a, you know, good road access. Um, the area surrounding is campus, housing, armory, and also there is a residential, um, there's a bike path behind there too, so. And then utilities are available and it's right on the fiber loop. How many acres that mean? Yeah, that's approximately 12 acres. Yeah, just see it if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So once again, that's got a flat area. You know, it's on a couple main roads. And um, and this one here, of course, we're looking for that. Um, you know, that perfect. If anyone has 12 acres that's all flat, let, let me know. <laughs> but uh, this one's 14.3 uh, North ba Marquette Ball Fields. Um, you know, for all these sites, there is some challenges moving forward. Um, you know, if we, uh, if we, if this one's, you got to replace the ball field. So those are some things that we need to consider. Uh, it's got some positives. Um, utilities are available. Um, it's on the fiber loop. That's uh, Presque Isle and uh, on, on Wright Street. Okay, the, the last site here is sort of a unique. When when we were going through all the maps and everything, um, we started looking at the area. Um, where this is where uh, the old uh, or the U.S. Fish and Wildlife is, it's adjacent to Northern's uh, heating plant. Um, it's also you had to really look hard to really see what is in that area. And when someone mentioned to me that, oh yeah, we got 12.6 acres, that possibility that we could utilize in that area, I said no way. But sure enough, the GIS system really uh, verified that. And again, there is a private landowner adjacent to this where the 18.7 um, would be possible. Um, conditions entirely flat, it's open area. Um, there is uh, access to the roads. It is surrounded by industrial use cur currently right now. Um, again, Northern's got their uh, service center there too that's uh, behind the location. Uh, utilities are available. And then uh, it is on the fiber loop. It's you kind of run your finger around. Yeah. 
Okay, right here is uh, Wright Street here. This is uh, 550. So we're looking at this here, down here. And of course, we'd have to work with Northern on. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right here. And again, this is uh, Wright Street there, and then we have uh, County Road 550. So there is, in that cluster there, there is 12.6 uh, acres. Here's a little bit better one. <coughs> Another thing too is, you know, when we, uh, uh, I think Bill mentioned before, before we even started <coughs> this exercise, we went out to, reached out to potential partners. Uh, those included uh, Marquette Public Schools, uh, Marquette County, Board Light and Power, Northern Michigan. And we were really looking at, as we move forward, to is there any um, possible uh, uh, partnerships that we can do for facilities, you know, that we could partner with. So a lot of that is, was, uh, you know, considered. Uh, we, a lot of things came out of that. So as we continue to move through the process, we will continue the dialogue with those uh, potential partners. So a lot of, um, there's a lot of moving parts that uh, just because we don't have anything, to, you know, definite, we're gonna continue uh, working with those uh, partner partnerships. <laughs> So that's a, uh, just a short presentation in a nutshell. Uh, once again, I want to thank the, the city staff and uh, for a lot of, a lot of the uh, work that they have done, that we have done. Um, there's a lot of thought that has gone into this. Uh, once again, we are always open for input. And I think this is the uh, opportunity um, for, uh, to uh, solicit any input. And uh, again, comments are definitely encouraged. Um, so uh, that concludes this portion of the presentation. So what I thought we would do is if um, anyone wishes to speak, if you could just come up and uh, state your name and address and then uh, just make any comments. And then after all the comments, we'll then open it up for uh, questions. Anyone wishing to make any comments? Staff? <laughs> okay, I guess we'll open it up for questions. <laughs> no questions. <laughs> <laughs> I did, what? some of the factors that were going to go into the um, this new municipal center. Did you factor in how far the trucks would have to move from um, back and forth depending upon which area you choose? The question was, is did we factor in the, where is it? That would go under logistics. You know, basically that was uh, definitely a consideration. Um, I just want to acknowledge uh, the former public works directors here, uh, Steve, <laughs> shaking head, Steve Laurie. Um, I talked to Steve, you know, and he educated me the process that they went through in selecting the current um, facility. And Steve's a numbers guy, and I think he had uh, mileage for every truck, every route. Um, a very thorough uh, uh, evaluation. Um, Scott and Eric, you know, we did look at that. That was a big, that was part of our uh, criteria, um, you know, to have it, you know, way, you know, south, where all the parks are this way, the central area, a lot of the residential streets that need plowing, you know, are, uh, you know, in, in a certain area. 
So those that was used in uh, making the short list. Kurt, uh, questions. One. Uh, location 550 is that north of the White Bridge? Between um, the White Bridge and the railroad track? Correct. 550? Correct. So that would be where the old tar pit used to be? Correct. Yep. That is a good area. And also McClellan, because you don't want to be putting all that equipment in a residential area, because even where our snow dump is on Wright Street and Lakeshore Boulevard, the old Cliff Dahl site, mm -hmm. one of the things that people had always called me about was the backup alarms at 2, 3, yep. 4 o'clock in the morning. And public works is pretty much 24-7. So when people were getting off midnight shift even and try to sleep at 8 in the morning, they couldn't. Yep. And the ones that got off the day shift couldn't sleep at night because the, those alarms are very loud, which <coughs> is, you know, Required by OSHA, so yeah. And again, that uh, that falls like under logistics too. The one thing, again, as we move forward towards design facility, there's a lot of um, site plan, a lot of engineering, um, the way to design the traffic flow. Um, you can design a uh, facility that there's very limited backing up. Uh, one thing, as we any of these sites, we we are not anticipating a snow dump. You know, to, right now we use uh, four acres um, of the current site for a snow dump, but any of these new sites, we don't uh, anticipate a snow dump per se at that facility. Look at the slide that had the the sizes of the various uses occupied on the site. One of the things that we removed and can relocate elsewhere is the snow dump portion of that. Uh, just to take that into consideration, we knew this site would probably have to make some different accommodations just because of the land that is left in Marquette to be used or reused. That, um, you know, that's something that can be relocated to more of an outlying area. It's what I was looking at, Kurt, was back in the 50s and the 60s, People didn't want it way out south, Marquette, because it was too much of a long run, mm -hmm. or from way out north. But now with the new major arteries with McClellan Street and all that, it's no longer a far distance away like it used to be. Correct. Okay. So you're you're also likely to have multiple smaller dumps that are closer to where we're hauling from, as opposed to one large centrally located <coughs> dump with this. So you'll be able to, you know, maybe use some of those sites that were further away from residential areas but weren't used before because you had the larger, more centrally located ones. So for example, the tar pit will be an area that will likely be used for hauling snow in the north of the town. Then you still use that snow dump off of Division Street just before, you, just past the detention home? No. You don't use that no more? No. Curtin, two things if I can. Uh, I really think this is a terrific <coughs> opportunity to build a building that can fully utilize all of the en energy efficiencies that we have today. Mm -hmm and to build one that would be far more sustainable over time than what we currently have. So this is, this is really a really unique opportunity. Uh, second point though, as you went through the, the drill here of considering sites and options, did you consider the one of separating out non-essential components from DPW? For example, the engineers don't need to be out there, they can be somewhere else. Uh, perhaps there's other ancillary groups that don't really need to be with the equipment. Yeah. Yeah, excellent question. Um, that will be part of our, um, as we get that engineer, architect, you know, the design team, you know, under under contract, that's, I call it sort of our operational needs. That's when, we're, before we, we're not gonna come to the public and say we're building that. All those, those, uh, those suggestions, 
will be looked at. We've looked at them preliminary right now, but those need to be, again, looked at very hard. Uh, so we may find out that we're, we only need a 60,000 know, square foot building. So those, those options are still, will, will, will be discussed as we go into more detailed design. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, I, I understand what you're saying. We may have a, um, we could have a different location for a, you know, for the parks and rec, but uh, those, those will be uh, definitely considered. Great, thank you. Again, that's gonna be a, again, that, that's gonna be a, a, a process, uh, but again, when we have, a, let's say, another public meeting like this, we want to make sure when we have these meetings, we've, we've got stuff to show you. Um, I like pictures. I think a lot of people like pictures. Um, before, uh, I think it's important that, uh, you know, you can actually see something and then, just like we're doing here, is look at things and, again, you know, all ideas are, ideas are welcome. So. I'm sure this is going to come up from some other... Um community member as well. I'm, you looked at the, um, what I could, the landfill property. I mean, doesn't the city still own that? And Yeah, that, that site was not considered. Okay. And that was not 12 acres? Um, I'm not sure exactly. The, the old landfill, the recycling center? Or <coughs> the landfill itself, or the old dump would not be appropriate that you're not going to be able to build yeah. or reuse that land for this type of operation um, there is other property surrounding it that you know, could be looked at I guess yeah. okay I just was curious what the thoughts were on that thank you yeah, yeah I know there's a uh, environmental control or you, you can't build on top of a old dump you know so there's uh, definitely some challenges that you would have to yeah, so that site has not been considered at this time. Well, let me offer, uh, it looks like we've got a pretty quiet group. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we've scratched <laughs> all your riches, I know. Uh, but why don't we take one more question or provide an opportunity before we close. We have the room till 8 o'clock. <laughs> so it can either be a really great question or what we might do is encourage you uh, since we've got a group of like-minded people here to maybe spend some time reaching out to each other oh, that's good. and uh, uh, maybe getting an opportunity to have chats you might not want to have through this forum. But one more question if we have one. <laughs> it doesn't look like we have one more question. Oh, there we are, Mike. Bill, I have one, one comment. Um, I know where all these, these sites are because I've lived here for 40 years. But I've lived through by... <clears throat> the Marquette uh, Medical Dental Center, it's a medical mm -hmm. center for 40 years. And one of the things that always has impacted that neighborhood is the plowing of that facility at night. Mm -hmm. And you hear those back up Good point. all the time. I mean, I, it's always continually uh, noisy. Now, knowing where each one of these sites are, I can tell you the Anders Elder Drive and all those things that we dealt with when the Peninsula Medical Center, because that's gone through several phases since I've lived here, I mean, that was always, a, the noise problem was always a concern. So I don't know how you incorporate those kind of barriers, um, but I know that's going to be an issue as you as you move forward with those sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's well taken. Once again, that that's, that's why we're here. Those are the things that, you know, we want to hear. Uh, you can, I know, a few of our engineers out there. Uh, I know there's some engineer uh, techniques that you could use to, you know, have a, a hill or something like that to try and, uh, you know, uh, avoid some of those sounds. One thing I think what's going to be fun, or you know, for not only for our, for the city but for the community is be involved in the uh, the design of this. I think we can whatever location is picked. Um, I think uh, I think. Uh, I forget who it was that we are going to incorporate, you know, some pretty good technology for energy efficiency. I think that's where we can really step up to the plate and really look at the uh, operation we have now. Um, not that you know Steve did an excellent job on the, 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 the our current facility, but let's tweak it and make it better and make it more efficient. 
Well, thank you everybody for coming this evening. We really appreciate you taking the time to help us get our arms around this a little bit better. As I shared, there's going to be at least two other public meetings where you're going to have an opportunity to share your views directly with the Commission and help them deliberate. And uh, we'll look forward in the meantime to any thoughtful comments you might care to offer. Uh, please feel free to send them to Kurt or myself and we'll make sure that we log them and keep them actionable. And in the meantime, uh, please have a, a safe drive home and a happy new year. Thank you.